Euphrates River continues to dry up as prophesied within the Bible. This is an amazing foot. Revelation 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The Euphrates River continues to dry up as prophesied within the Bible. This is an amazing footage I came across from 2020 in comparison to 2021 in the same spot you'll see right now. Here's 2020. You'll see how full it is, and you'll see here in a moment <laughs> just the level that it's dropped to. Just absolutely seeing Bible prophecy in front of our eyes. And this we know will come to pass because of Revelation 16, 12, when the sixth angel pours out his vial on the river Euphrates, and the water therefore is dried up so the kings of the east can be prepared. So that was 2020 and as you can see here 2021 and the river is completely dried up we aren't at the part of revelation where the angels are pouring out their vials but it's moving towards this time and i believe that this is a foreshadowing god giving a warning for people to actually see that the bible is real and to get their hearts completely right before the angel pours his vial on the river and it's completely dried up and the four angels that are bound there are loosed that will cause absolute havoc upon the earth as mentioned in revelation 9 13 through 15. Okay. All right. So first of all, let's see. How do we want to do this here? <clears throat> first of all, okay. To understand Revelation sixteen twelve, you gotta you gotta understand the whole book of Revelation, really. So what's happening here is God is pouring out vials of wrath upon the earth. This is the time when we are lifted up in the air with Jesus and our enemy is gathered down at our feet and fire comes down from heaven from God and the wicked are destroyed forever. So this pouring out of the vials of wrath is the wrath of God. We that are saved are up in the air, and the unsaved, uh, the wrath of God is poured on the unsaved. It's not poured on the saved, okay? So uh, we see, you know, the first vial, the second vial, all the way up to the, the sixth vial here. And you think about the fifth vial, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnaw their tongues for pain. And they and blaspheming the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. So these, this is not happening. It's not happening now. There's no, this is, none of this is going to happen until we are lifted up in the air. After we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord, then these things will happen. But it's been brought to my attention that people are out there teaching that the river Euphrates is drying up and therefore this is evidence of 1612 being fulfilled. It's not. Alright, first of all, here's the river Euphrates. Alright, and it, it, it might be drying up, it might completely dry up, completely irrelevant. Doesn't matter. For one thing, <clears throat> you see that this is a Good sized river. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to do this here. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, if we back this out a little bit, you see they're talking about this being dried up. So, why, if that's being dried up, this would have to be dried up. And for that, I mean, I'm not going to pretend to know the circuits of the water, but if it's being dried up, it's being dried up by men, and it has nothing to do at all with Revelation 16. It's uh, uh, it, you know, I got a river 
less than a half a mile from my house and it'll dry up and then it'll overflow and it'll dry up and it'll overflow. That's what happens. So you know, why it's dried up in a year ago, I don't know. It has nothing to do with Revelation 16 or Revelation 9. None of that. But there's an interesting article here. Daily Monitor. Peek into Bible prophecy. Cryptic guide to end times. End is nigh. What you need to know. End is nigh. So. That's interesting. It's interesting. Because. There are people that feed on people that do not read and do not understand the Bible. And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, Jesus is the Christ, and the time draws near. Go ye not after them. All right, so this is what these guys are doing. They said, Look, the river Euphrates is drying up, the time is near. That's what Jesus is talking about. Okay, people just like this. Okay. So the article goes on and says, Today we are here to tell you things that are going to shock you. Oh, sounds exciting. Yeah. Unraveling the tangle that is Bible prophecy. It's not a tangle. It's very simple and easy to understand if you have faith. Proving irrefutable evidence of various end-time biblical prophecies coming to pass in our day. And so I'm going to refute um, most of these. I'm, I'm not going to even, this first one here, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to address it. Okay, one of the most recent fulfilled end-time prophecy is the return to life of the Dead Sea, known as the saltiest sea on the earth. The Dead Sea can neither support any marine life, nor can any plant or animal life survive around it. However, in Ezekiel 47, God told the prophet Ezekiel that the water would become fresh and living creatures would inhabit it. This prophecy came to pass in 2016 when freshwater ponds with fish were discovered on its shores. Right, that, that's not true at all, but I'm not going to even address that. I'm going to let that one go. Kabuleta also expounded on the major war prophesied in Revelation 9 and Ezekiel 38 along the river Euphrates that will happen in these last days. All right, uh, never mind the fact that it's not there. There is no such prophecy, never mind that. The Bible reveals that the war will suck in countries along the river Euphrates. And just mention a bunch of countries. Pretend like you know what you're talking about. And it says uh, there will be a military force of tw 200 million soldiers that will surround Israel. A bunch of godless people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And... Um, given its meager population of only 20 million. So Israel only has 20 million, but there's going to be 200 million people convinced that they have to surround Israel. And then, of course, you know, never mind the idea of just sending a nuclear bomb and destroying Israel. We're going to put everybody we know and surround Israel. And then Israel is going to have no choice but to use their nuclear weapons and kill 200 million soldiers. Okay, that's the idea. Right. Boy, the war's already planned out. It's already concluded. It's, that's never going to happen. And um, all that would be happening is a bunch of godless people killing other godless people, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. And I would even question the idea of this. So, uh, Zechariah 14, 12 describes what will happen in this war, and it's akin to the description of human flesh being vaporized by nuclear explosion. I'm going to let that one go, too. To allow easy movement of the armies in this war, Revelation 16, 12 foretells that river Euphrates will dry up, 
this prophecy came to pass in, tw in January 2021. Alright, so if we go back. So apparently, the sixth seal, what are we in here? The sixth vial, I should say. That that already that's already fulfilled. Vials one through five haven't been fulfilled, strangely enough. But number the sixth vial has. It's ridiculous. Okay. Whatever. When it was reported that the river was drying up, according to experts, oh experts. Well, experts are people that know things that we could never know they're just smarter than us they know more they know everything and they are as gods and we have to listen to them and not question them we will never be an expert only experts can be experts and we're not experts it could be no more by ooh, it could be no more by 2040 if nothing is done so we better start giving our money to somebody get something done there due to the never like you know what we'll give this guy a bunch of money couldn't we get this thing figured out due to the never before experienced devastating effects of war the world will be united in the search for a temporary peaceful resolution among the warring parties this Kabbaletta deduces will lead to the signing of the seven year peace agreement spoken about in Daniel 9 verse 27 the Bible says at the end of those seven years human government will end and Jesus will return let's go check this one Daniel 9 verse 27 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate this is talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ alright so after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off the Messiah is Jesus Christ these people will teach and tell you that the Messiah is the Antichrist all right so that Jesus made an end to the sacrifice and oblation by his death because he became the sacrifice the offering for our sin all right he put an end to it and then uh, he also made the overspreading of abominations, which is what they did. He, he now makes it desolate. And so now, let's do it this way. So now the nation of God is no longer the Jews, but it is those that believe. Uh, Uh, now it's those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus says therefore I say unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof All right. and again in Peter it says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a, pe a peculiar people alright so this um, overspreading of abominations that were part of the Jewish tradition is now desolate. The consummation, the making or the action of making a marriage or relationship complete. It's not forget about the sexual intercourse stuff. This is talking about uh, when Jesus comes down from heaven and we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate meaning the unsaved will be destroyed forever okay that's when fire comes down out of heaven from God and destroys the wicked 
forever. This has nothing at all to do with the seven year peace agreement. Not at all. And this is also furthers my point that the unsaved people cannot understand the Word of God. And so they teach an alternate view of what they what sounds fantastic. And I'm not I'm not kidding you. They are trying to sell the fantastic. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 3, but even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. So they, they can read it, but they can't understand it. Unless they turn to the Lord and the veil shall be taken away. Alright, so let's go back, because this is incredible stuff here. According to the experts, you got to love the experts, don't you? I wonder who these experts are. Due to the never-before-experienced devastating... Oh, I already read that. Excuse me. Sorry about that. As it was in the days of Noah. Alright, so Jesus says, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking. They were just carrying on with their daily lives like we are today. In Luke 17, Jesus prophesied that the time of His return will be similar to the days of Noah. Let's do it this way. We've got to confirm what he's saying. We can't just take his word for it. That's how we get conned. That's how we get deceived, right? So where are we at here? There it is. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So when, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven they did eat they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all likewise also it was in the days of Lot okay. let's go back to this article in Noah's time fallen angels had sex with humans producing giant demonic human race with superpowers never seen before. The story of giant race in a worldwide flood is recorded and retold in 500 cultures across the continent. It was only Noah and his family that still had the pure God-given DNA that were saved to repopulate the earth. So this is completely alternate to what the Bible says. In that time, people became superhuman through interaction with spirits, and now the same will happen through interaction with technology. All right, first of all, before we go any further, this is unbelievable. People that have absolutely zero understanding, but I'm telling you, this will sell. This will sell. They can make movies, they can make comic books. I mean, you see it today. The most popular movies in Hollywood are superhero movies. This sort of stuff sells. That's what they're teaching, and that's what people are believing, because they don't read the Bible, and, they, and the, the uh, majority of them that do read the Bible don't believe what it says. All right, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, For that he also is flesh. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And the sons of God came into the daughters of men and bare children to them. The same became mighty men. He's talking about man here. Which were of old men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man. So what about these superheroes that are coming down and having sex? Why doesn't God destroy them? Huh? Nobody ever questions that. And where's the superheroes at? Because these giants were in the earth after the flood. So God failed miserably. Didn't destroy none of them. They just came back. He destroyed all man, but he just left a, 
you know, the Superman and Spider-Man, they lived somehow. And then, of course, I gotta address this here. Now that Noah and his family still had the pure God-given DNA. Um, might, that might be as ridiculous as the idea of superheroes. But here in verse 9, it says, um, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Perfect meaning he had faith. And we can prove that, confirm that, in Hebrews 11. By faith, by faith. Noah was perfect by faith. Being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and become heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Perfect DNA. Come on, man. That's just nonsense. That's superhero stuff. In that time, people became superhuman. Superman, Spider-Man, Boogeyman, you know, the Hulk, Iron Man, you know, the Hulk, they all... <laughs> it was a superhero world just like you're seeing in Hollywood movies right this is ridiculous stuff this is what they believe though you don't write these articles if you don't believe them now the same will happen in that time people became superhuman through interaction with spirits and now the same will happen through interaction with technology well we're seeing that in the movies just watch Transhumanism, a belief that claims that human, human beings have been evolving in the next stage of evolution of humans is to turn transhuman. Human beings without limitations, the kind of humans we see in the plethora of superhero themed films and series being released these days, such as X-Men, Superman, The Flash, Homelander, another scientific maneuver among others, that is taking us back to the days of Noah's Project Immortality. It is a plan which seeks to create a system to ensure pseudo-immortality for mankind by transferring a person's consciousness to another person's body. This concept was explored in the Netflix series Altered Carbon. Humans can now harvest cons consciousness and transfer it in an avatar that will never fall sick or die. In June 2022, Marina Smith, 87 year old who passed away in the UK, was able to address the mourners at her own funeral thanks to this technology. Just like the time of Noah, humans will soon be able to achieve superhumanness and eternal life without God. Well, it's only eternal life if it lasts forever so they can't achieve eternal life what are you selling here Jack our bodies will be like machines or robots where we can upgrade to whatever version we wish through a chip placed in the forehead or in right hand which will be the mark of the beast spoken of in Revelation 13 they, the continued pursuit of immortality explains why Revelation 9, verse 6 is through 8 says, In the last days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. If this sounds strange, it's because it's false. Or, it's, or it is because we are living in strange times. Well, that's true. We are living in strange times. We may not be able to pinpoint the exact day and time, but our experts are working on it, of Jesus' return. But the signs reveal that we are inching closer to the end of this age. <clears throat> that right there is a, a dead giveaway that uh, somebody reads a corrupt Bible. End of this age or the end of the world depends on what Bible 
version, right? So, uh, what do I want to address here? Let's go to Revelation 9 real quick. Because Revelation 9 also talks about the Euphrates. Now I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Okay, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the eight, four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared, prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Okay, so that sounds fantastic if you don't understand nothing. Alright, so let's go back. Do we have to go all the way to the top? So this is the fifth angel. A star shall fall upon the earth. And came locust. And they were killing everything. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So those of us that are sealed, that are saved, we're not going to be hurt during this wrath of God, period. Like I said, we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord Jesus. And the wrath of God is only being poured out on the unsaved, not being poured out on the saved. This is not another judgment day or another wrath of God, you know. It's not like the, God's going to pour out his wrath and then he's going to pour it out again at another time there's not like multiple end of the world judgments if you will there's just one all these mentions are talking about the same event it's giving you another angle another description so that we might be able to understand it and all we have to do is connect the dots and, and see that these are all talking about the same thing okay in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them this is talking about when God is pouring his wrath upon the unsaved all of this is a description of that taking place and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon one will is passed and behold there come two woes more hereafter and the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates and the four angels were loose which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand and I heard the number of them and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jink with brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of the mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. Alright, so this is, all this is talking about the wrath of God, and all this is happening, and it's not going to matter. Alright, because the unsaved are, uns are they're unsaved for a reason. And just like what we read in, uh, what is that, uh, about Lazarus, uh, where there's a great divide, and go down at the bottom here, and um, the rich guy, he says, um, I have five brethren, you know. Go tell them that he, may that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So these people, no matter what happens, they're not going to 
repent. They're not going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? They're unsaved. And they're going to be destroyed. And God has given us many descriptions of this event that's happening. And not just in Revelation. We see it all throughout the Bible. But, um, boy, this... This uh, idea of superhumans, you know, Batman and Robin stuff, this is very popular. This is not, uh, you know, minority view. This is mainstream view among all, you know, uh, the mega churches and so on and so forth. This, this is what they believe. Angels had sex with humans. And produced uh, Superman, Spider-Man, and uh, all these guys. And the Flash. Uh, I've never heard of Homelander. Must be a new one. X-Men. Superman. Right. That's what they believe. That's what they're teaching. And it's logical, in a sense, that, well, uh, fallen angels came down and had sex, well, and they produced these Supermen. Uh, they had superpowers. Well, it's, it's really not logical at all, is it? No, it doesn't make any sense, but it's a fantastic idea. Right? Superheroes. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not in the Bible at all. Okay. It's no, no, uh, verse in there to support it. And everything in the Bible goes against that. And Jesus says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. That means they didn't have sex. Alright, so... Angels don't have sex. Angels are spirits. They don't matter. You lay the truth right out in front of them, and it just doesn't matter. You know, people just will not see it because they refuse to see it. They don't want to believe it. You could have people coming out of their graves and showing them the truth, and they will not see it because they do not want to see it. Same thing with these superheroes. I bet this guy got a lot of people following him. I guarantee it. Anybody with a shirt like that, you know they got a lot of people following him. Anyways, that's enough.